Hey guys, I'm Sage Daniel, uh, and today we'll be talking about notions pricing. It might be confusing to some people, uh, or you might be thinking, is this for me? Do I even need to pay? I know it's free, but I'm not sure exactly. What's the difference between free and paid? Should I pay? So we're going to look through a couple of questions, namely these right here. I'll be walking through them one by one. Uh, we have them um, in written form here if you want to navigate faster. But if you prefer uh, me discussing with you, and I'll be adding some more info as I go for the article, um, this is pretty much for you. And of course, I'll be switching between our page and the, the Notion page. So um, without any further ado, let's just jump into it. Uh, is Notion a paid tool? Can you use Notion for free? The answer is for 99.5% of you guys out there, probably you're going to be very, very, you're going to be very well served by Notion's free plan. And in fact, I know very few people that just start and say from the beginning, I need to pay for Notion. I need a paid plan. So um, it is a common technique, a common system put out by uh, tech companies just give away uh, stuff for free and then with time as people realize that they are power users they will upgrade to a paid plan so what that means is um, we'll be looking at this one right here notion personal you just get started and i think you might have a trial here if you want to start straight straight on to that but realistically no need for that just start on the free plan and it's kind of like an unlimited free trial and I know people who've been using it for years and have never paid Notion a dime and Notion is fine with that. Um, it, if, if you're, they're, they're confident enough that if you're on a paid plan, sorry, if you're on a free plan, you'll like it enough to uh, tell your friends about it even if you don't pay for it. So uh, that shows confidence, I would say, from Notion as a company. Um, this, what I've just tackled so far, kind of, uh, kind of explains what Notion is. So no, kind of answers the question of what is Notion, which uh, the answer is just go and see for yourself. But I'm guessing if you're watching this, you already know it's a uh, note-taking app, but um, it's actually more than that. It can be pretty flexible. So I'll jump over that. Doesn't Notion offer a free trial? I've already covered that and said there's a free version that's usable forever. But of course they have a free trial on the, or even on the paid plan, oh, sorry, on the Teams plan. So on both um, paid plans they do have a trial um, obviously this is subject to change but I would say it's pretty pretty certain that they are going to keep offering trial versions all right let's see uh, is notion paid we've covered that what notion plan should I choose um, again start on the the quick answer is start on the free plan and my rule of thumb is keep using Notion until you hit a limitation. Whether that limitation is something like, I want a version history of all the files I have. And a version history is pretty much, um, let's say on the 1st of April, you make your page in a certain way, but then you keep updating it every, every seven days. So on the 7th of April is different from the 14th of April, from the 21st, blah, blah, blah. And then you're now in October and you're saying, oh, Jesus, let me see how the page looked like on the 1st of April or on the 7th, or on the 14th, you can have a, sorry, on the 1st of May, I should have said, because it's only a 30-day history. On the 1st of May, you will see, be able to see 30 days in the past how the page looked like. And so you, you keep a history of every change at any moment. You might be familiar with this if you've ever used Google Docs. Uh, they have a function like that where you can see at any moment what other new things or were added or removed. But... um. That is an example of a limitation. Obviously, you can consult at the table and see what kind of limitations will I probably encounter. File upload. So on the free plan, five megabytes is pretty decent because it's not like five megabytes um, generally in all your Notion. It's just five megabytes per file. So you can have as many uh, files for, I mean, obviously don't abuse this because Notion might be knocking your door on your door and saying something like you need to either get Dropbox or Google Drive or something else. But if you're on a paid plan, and this is why we're covering this article as well, Notion kind of acts like Dropbox or Google Drive or OneDrive or whatever you might be using, box.com. Um, sure, the interface will not be the same. It won't be in the same that in the same way that Dropbox tries to mimic uh um, a folder explorer in your Windows or in your Mac, 
But then again, you've seen for yourself how Notion deals with the so-called blocks. So a text block is the same as a file block or what have you. In a way, I'm saying, and I'm thinking, and I'm actually doing it, you could be using Notion instead of Dropbox for on a paid plan for unlimited uh, unlimited file uploads. So um, a page, as you know, can also be at the same time a folder, but it doesn't have to be. So in a page, you could add stuff there the same way you would add to a folder in your finder if you're on a Mac or in your file explorer, however it is called on, on Windows. Um, that is another example of a limitation. So stick to free, then jump on a paid plan if you encounter a limitation or, or um, we're covering this here. Where is it? Good news if you're a student. Notion gives you the, perso the personal pro plan for free. So they have a very easy system for which you verify the fact that you are a student or you are working in education and they will just give you this plan right here. So you'll be saving $5 a month or $4 a month if you would have paid annually, whatever. You save this amount and you get it for free on an education plan. Let's see, coming up, should I pay for Notion? Once again, not really if you're doubting it. If you will know for sure when you hit a limitation um, on... Um, Let's say, I don't know, you really ma you're really making use of, of their support. And at one point, I don't think there's ever been once that I've uh, reached out to their support because I think it's pretty straightforward. But I don't know, maybe for whatever reason, you want to have priority support. You don't want to wait that much because you're using it so often. Um, but um, once again, should you pay? Not really, unless you see a clear reason. Other than that, it's all fine if you stick to um, to the free plan. Let's see, what else are we doing here? Uh, a Notion pricing comparison. So it used to be that you could only have a, a certain number of blocks. And again, a block is, it could be a text block, could be a toggle block, could be a database block, could be a file block. But all of that is in the past, so I won't bore you with the history of Notion. Um, over here, we're quickly going through a couple of, of uh, in-text, through a couple of differences between the personal and the personal pro, so in simple words, the free plan versus the $4 plan. Uh, and when I say $4, I mean $4 a month. And then we're comparing the $4 a month to the $8 a month plan, which I have to say it's $8 per, what is it, per member, per collaborator. So as you can see right here, $8 per user per month. So if you have 10 people, that would be $80 a month but then you get billed annually. So if you want to pay monthly, that would be a hundred bucks a month. Let me see what else we have here. Notion team versus enterprise plans. Um, Notion doesn't show any public pricing here because basically what happens is you would talk to them, to their sales team. You would tell them what you need because maybe you don't need all of these things, but look, unlimited version history. For some people, this might not matter, but for other teams, it might. So based on that, they will give you a preferential price they, they they try to balance that with uh, the number of users that are in your team. So the more, the better, but also with what kind of features you you would need. So secure single sign on is pretty much standard when you when you sign an enter enterprise contract. But then you can uh, kind of like a car configure, you can add or remove stuff. But of course, that's in a conversation. So uh, feel free to just contact them here and they'll probably reach out to you and discuss uh, uh, some stuff. I don't know your situation, but once again, reach out to them. It will all be fine. Is it safe to pay for Notion? Uh, Notion is a pretty legit company. If you search them up in Google, you will see all their what funding rounds or all their news. And uh, you can see that there hasn't been any major instance besides, I'm guessing some people that might have not agreed with a color change or a product change, which kind of happens all the time. But other than that, uh, they are trusted by many favorite companies. Let's see, what do they show on their uh, on their homepage? So they see Pixar, Travel Perk, Corner Shop, Spotify, Headspace, and I'm sure there's way more than that, but they're, they're just discussing, showcasing a few of them. Um, customer story, let's see, you probably see some more names here if you're looking, look, Buffer, I know Buffer. Anyway, um, yeah. So it's pretty safe to say that they're as safe as they could get. Obviously, anything can happen, but um, no need to worry about your credit card being stolen or any kind of scam. Um, they're a serious company. 
How does Notion charge me? Uh, you can pay either monthly or yearly. You get to choose that. Uh, once again, as you can see, they will give you a preferential um, price if you pay uh, annually upfront as opposed to paying a bit more if you want to be on a monthly contract. So that should answer that. Does my Notion subscription automatically renew? Yep. Once you sign up, no need to worry about any anything like that. You can cancel it at any point. But, um, and I've heard that Notion's customer support is pretty nice and it is in their interest to do that. Um, oh, can I cancel my Notion subscription? So the next question, I was already answering, answering it. Uh, yeah, you would need to go to settings and members section. Let's. All right, one second, let me show you exactly. So settings and members, uh, once you hit plans and then downgrade button. So settings and members is right here. And you want to go to, let's see, plans. Where is this? It should be here. Okay, now it's called upgrade. So. Obviously, this is subject to change as they will refine and upgrade or just update, I guess, their dashboard. And over here, if you are on one of the plans, you will just click cancel. Um, I'm taking this straight from, or I see it's already changed a bit. This is on a team plan. Taking this, this screenshot straight from the from Notion's um, set of documentation, I guess, screenshots. But that's about it. Um, where were we? What's the difference between the free versus paid Notion plan? I we covered that. Can I build a website with Notion? This is a bit of self promo on our end. Uh, what other free resources are there? That's it. We've gotten to the um, to the bottom of of this of this article. I hope this answers your question. I know some people get a bit confused when they see this, but um, bottom line is this, and I'll just restate what I said in the beginning as a as a conclusion. Now, at the end, just start on the free plan. Keep going for as long as you need. No need to worry about anything unless you hit at one point a roadblock. You say, I would love this, but this, this is not covered by the free plan. That is when you should upgrade. But 99% of you won't get there. I do expect that in the future, Notion will keep adding new, not new roadblocks, because they strike me as a uh, conscious and smart company. They don't seem like they they would they push back on their uh, user base because many people love them and they want to keep it that way. But I'm thinking I, my estimation is that they will keep adding new stuff, mostly for people for power users for people who will be making a more either commercial value or will be getting more value out of them. So let's say if they would add something like let's just say payments. It's, it's just an easy example. If they enable payments on on uh, or let me let me think of something. Else. Maybe calendar scheduling. I don't know. I'm just picking random examples here. Things where there's commercial value for those power users. So it makes sense that if I myself am making a hundred bucks extra because I'm using uh, that feature, it will be a, a brainless uh, decision to just pay four bucks a month because I'm making an extra hundred a month. But for the time being, I hope this answers your questions about Notion's pricing. Uh, make sure you drop a comment below with any kind of other questions you might have. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.